Hello, it's me. I'm Nafid. Uh, in this short video, we'll talk about the MAC authentication on the Aruba CX switch. Now, in this MAC authentication, I'll show you how to configure a clear pass with MAC authentication, how to configure the MAC authentication settings globally on the CX switch as well as on the interface, how to test the MAC authentication. Also, we're testing the dynamic authorization, which is COA. Now, in use case one, which is going to be only for MAC authentication, the VLAN will be fixed, i.e. the same VLAN that's configured on the switch port that the client connects to would be the same one after MAC authentication. In use case 2, it will be different. So we will perform MAC authentication, but at the same time, that MAC authentication will dictate what VLAN, what dynamic VLAN to be assigned to the switch port. So we will start with interface in VLAN 1, access port in VLAN 1, and we'll end up in the interface in VLAN 11. So the actual actual VLAN physically or statically assigned is VLAN 1, but dynamically it will be VLAN 11 mapped to that interface while the client or the endpoint is authenticated. Keep in mind the client, the endpoint, this could be anything like CCTV, it could be anything like um, a printer, camera, some IoT device. They are not aware they are performing any form of authentication. The actual authentication happens on the switch CX interface that is connected to that input. Let's have a look. So on ClearPass, you need to create the MAC authentication service. Um, you just you can do it either by template or you can do it by um, save some scratch is a simple one so we can add it from here and we're gonna go with the Mac authentication and we're gonna call this one CX Mac service so that's the basic one, Mac authentication, and it is applicable to both wired and wireless. The Mac authentication. So what I'm going to do, I'm just. We don't need wireless. It's only wired in this case. So we're going to just adjust this one and remove the wireless. Only make it the wired and all of these so these conditions need authentication what they do they say allow all mac authentication what is this it means when they connect and the mac is unknown it will not be rejected so really important because when the station connects no uh, known mac initially is unknown mac and here we can see that we are going to use the endpoint repository as the source of the authentication i'll keep it as simple as as possible no enforcement uh, allowed just everything is allowed uh, simply speaking and whatever vlan you configured on that switch interface will be the one that will be assigned so there's no dynamic vlan assignment in this case simple mac authentication we're going to save this one and uh, i'll show you on the switch later how the authentication the radio setup and the mac authentication how it is enabled if we go that's our client, we're going to reset, so disable the port um, to force authentication. We'll double check on the switch and see if authentication is enabled for the client. So let's have a look. Show authentication client details. Uh, without details, you're going to see the client is authenticated. Now, if we check um, the MAC authentication, it says untag VLAN 11. And that's a VLAN we have not sent any VLAN back to, to the switch. It's just the same VLAN that has been configured on the switch interface. Show interface, show run current context. You're going to see the interface where it is connected to the client has untagged VLAN 11. Access VLAN access 11 means untagged uh, VLAN 11. So that's um, the interface. If we look at ClearPass itself, we're going to find the MAC is uh, authentication has taken place. 
and that's in the access tracker. The Mac authentication and uh, the uh, the role is just authenticated as we have seen before and the output is nothing allow access that's it and we have enabled accounting on the switch um, interface look into the switch and the mac authentication we have enabled mac authentication globally so the command shall run on the switch you're going to see a bunch of things uh, at the top of course in tv server all that stuff um, radius host 32 yeah this is the and with this with the with a password or the pre-shared key then the group we created cbpm this is something that we did create we enabled accounting on that group as well and then so globally we have also enabled radius dynamic authorization and then we said dynamic authorization client client is the ip address of the clear pass okay so that's uh, IP address of the clear pass. So when they send uh, a request to to uh, COA bounce the pool, um, that will be accepted, obviously. And on the interface, uh, what we have shall run current context. This one we have enabled MAC authentication on that interface. We can see that the MAC is authenticated. Click on this one, details or summary of the authentication. We are not doing anything much here. The user authenticator will be assigned by default. Authorization source is the endpoint. The endpoint is simply is the one that is where they read the information from as a client. They will read the MAC address. Enforcement profile allow access profile. Now, as you can see, um, this is the time of the authentication. And on the switch, we have seen it. So these are the configs on the switch radius enabled. Then the group is optional, but sometimes we need, uh, might want to have multiple groups for multiple servers. Um, and then enable the accounting here. The, this one is for accounting. Um, replay protection should be kept enabled in real production, but just in case, this is for the COA. And we have enabled dynamic authorization as well. Now, if we keep this one disabled, this means they will not look at the time on the switch, the difference between the switch and the message that comes from um, from the radius server. And if you look in, so that is the connection and we can send change status. Uh, we would like to bounce the interface on the switch. And let us see what message do we get. Of course, in real life, you have to synchronize the time on the switch as well as the same, like reference the same NTP server on the switch as well as on the all other devices, including, uh, of course, ClearPass. So if you clo close this one and you open this one again, you notice that we have sent dynamic authorization. And what we've done here, we bounce the interface. And then this means, bounce the interface, the dynamic authorization has been pushing the client to re-authenticate, so 917. See the difference between this and click on the last one. That's the latest connection due to the fact we have issued a dynamic authorization here, which is COA sent back to the switch interface, and then we bounce the interface. And this is about, so if we double check also the client uh, that are on the switch, so port access client. You're going to see there's one client on interface 8, and that client is indeed the, the MAC address of the uh, of our uh, endpoint. So if you check IP config slash all, notice that's a MAC address of our endpoint, which is equal to the same MAC address we have on the uh, actual uh, clear pass. So clear pass, you notice that's the username, which is the same MAC address as the client MAC address. So now we're going to test dynamic VLAN assignment. So the, the switch is not pre-configured with the same VLAN we would like to end up with. So the interface shall run current context. The interface is member of VLAN 1. We would like the client to pick up an IP in VLAN 11. So what we do on clear pass itself now, 
we need to create what's called an enforcement profile that will use that specific VLAN. So we need to create that enforcement profile. So step number one, we'll go enforcement profile and we're going to add one. This um, and the enforcement profile tab will be VLAN enforcement. Let's call it CX VLAN 11 untagged. And then the attribute here, we can see these are um, created by the clear pass. We can make changes. The only change I would like to make is to add this as VLAN 11. So that's now VLAN 11. And simply speaking, we're going to push that VLAN to the switch interface. But what we need to do to use that enforcement profile, we're going to create a simple enforcement policy. With one condition, if the user is authenticated, then we will push the enforcement profile that is equal to VLAN 11. Now we can take that one from the, like you can look at the access truck and you build your logic. I might say very simple. If the role equals user authenticated, then I would change the enforcement profile to VLAN 11. So what we're going to do, we will create an enforcement policy. And let's call that enforcement policy again, CX, CX enforcement policy uh, to assign VLAN 11 enforcement profile. So what we're going to do, we add simple rule here. So come here, what we're going to do, tips, make it extremely simple, road equals, and again very simple, we'll make it user authenticated, and then we will trigger the profile that we wanted for um, the CX one, so we have multiple of those. That's untag VLAN 11, and we're going to say save. Now we're going to say save this one. Uh, default profile, yes, we need to select the default profile. Uh, we're going to make it deny. Limited access profile, we can do this if you would like to. Spray this enforcement, so we're going to go. Any profile that can do, or can see more choices. We can say rate this deny profile, allow or deny access normally, and we're going to say save. So now that has been created, we will go back and revisit the service that we have created. This is our service. We can change the profile, the enforcing profile into the one we have just created. So it's going to be uh, CX enforcement policy. It says if the user is authenticated assign this enforcement profile which basically assigning VLAN 11. Now before we authenticate we we'll double check on the switch if the switch what kind of VLAN does the switch have interface so again sure run Let's connect again um, sure run interface one slash one slash eight is in VLAN 1, MAC authentication is enabled. So what we're going to do, we will bounce that interface locally, interface 1 slash 1 slash 8. We're going to shut it down, and we know shut down. So that should trigger into, um, MAC authentication. If that worked, then we should see an entry in the access tracker. 1043, 1043. Okay, that's now the time. So click on this. And then in the output, we should push VLAN 11. On the switch, we're going to say um, show port access, show port access client. We're going to say client has been assigned to VLAN 11. Now, the running config, i.e., the fixed config on the interface, so it looks like this. But the actual VLAN now that is assigned is VLAN 11. How do we know this? We know this from here, that's number one, but also we can issue the command show VLAN port one slash one slash eight. And we can see now 
it is VLAN 11. VLAN 11, that's where the client has picked up an IP address in VLAN 11. And we can even bounce the interface again. So this is the latest one. Now we're going to change the status. Bounce the interface. And that's VLAN. Uh, so that will trigger another authentication request that will be sent to the client and that should be in VLAN 11. Probably takes a bit uh, more time, but we'll uh, look at the uh, looking back into the switch. You're going to see that the client or the the port is in VLAN 11 and the client has picked up an IP in VLAN 11. We can verify the client as well. Look into the client. You find the client VLAN 11 is the one that is VLAN 11 and the IP address is in VLAN 11. I can ping the default gateway or whatever, 10.1.11.1, that should be pingable. Of course, we can ping um, 10.254.1.32, the IP address of the clear password should be pingable. We are not configured any security, so that should be allowed to uh, reach uh, clear pass. Going back to clear pass, notice, we have they have issued another okay that's a new request for authentication and that's where we have sent dynamic authorization ie coa to that switch interface